dentist will probably do is place some cotton wool, place some cotton wool rolls. I can't get this sentence out. Hello everybody, it's Charlie and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I'm going to be explaining to you different types of dental fillings. Now this was kind of a request from a subscriber of mine. She asked me to speak about the different glass ionomer fillings that you can have. There are quite a few, but I only know of two because we only use two in my practice. So I don't know a about the others. So what I thought I would do is talk about those two and also talk about composite and amalgam fillings as well. These videos are kind of hard for me to do because I can't show you any pictures other than what I can find online, but for privacy reasons I can't show you anything of what we would do in the surgery. I can't video anything, I can't take any pictures, so I just have to go off of what I can find on the internet. But that's enough of me talking now and let's just get straight on with explaining these fillings. So the first filling I'm going to be talking about today is a Fuji filling, also known as glass ionomer, also known as GI, short for glass ionomer. So a Fuji filling is a white filling and you can use this as a temporary or you can use it as a permanent filling. Now a Fuji filling comes in a little capsule which you need to put in an amalgamator and then pop in a little gun and then this squeezes out as liquid onto the patient's tooth and then it gets set with a curing light. And that's it really. It's a pretty easy filling to do from a dental nurse perspective because all you really need to do is mix the filling up, which the machine does for you anyway, pop it into the gun and then pass it over to the dentist and then obviously pass him or her the light. And that's it really for Fuji fillings. So that's one type of glass ionomer filling you can have. The other type is a GI filling glass ionomer. It's exactly the same, except instead of the amalgamator mixing it, you mix it yourself. So it's a powder mixed with a little bit of water. You would just mix it together on a little mixing pad. You can make it as runny or as solid as you like. I like to call it moldable or flowable just because that's an easy term to use. So if we're doing a temporary or permanent filling, I will always make the mixture moldable. And what that basically means is almost like a Play-Doh texture. So you can move it around in your fingers and you can pop it into the patient's tooth with your fingers or with a flat plastic, which the dentist would normally use to place that type of filling. If you're making the flowable version of this, that would normally be used if you are placing a crown. So if you're gluing a crown into place, you would use a flowable GI. You can also use Fuji to cement in a permanent crown because that is liquid. Now, both of these are white. They are tooth colored fillings, but they're not quite as strong as what an amalgam or a composite filling would be. Sometimes they are used around the incisors at gum level because moisture control isn't absolutely necessary to be able to place these fillings. Whereas the other white filling, a composite, you need really good moisture control. So I think I've pretty much covered that for Fuji fillings. To be completely honest with you, I'm not sure when would be appropriate to use these type of fillings. I definitely don't remember learning that specifically in college because that's not up to the dental nurse to decide, that's up to the dentist what he or she uses. Moving on now to a composite filling, which is the other type of tooth colored or white filling. Now to do a composite filling, you need three different materials. First of all, you need some acid etch. Now what this is gonna do is sort of clean the surface of the tooth and make it quite sort of rough for the filling to properly stick on. That gets put on to the area which you're gonna fill, left on for about 30 seconds and then washed off using a three in one tip and obviously the nurse using suction. After this step, you wanna make sure the tooth is kept really, really dry and this is why moisture control is so important. So what the dentist will probably do is place some cotton wool rolls around the mouth just to keep it nice and dry. So once you've washed off the etch and the area is completely dry, the dentist will then place a bonding material onto this. Now this sort of acts as a kind of super glue, place it onto the area that you've just etched and then set it with a curing light for about 10 seconds. When you're getting the bond out, you want to make sure that you get it out just before the dentist needs it because what can happen is that if you already squeeze it into a pot before you start the treatment, it can actually set with the lights that are in the surgery and then by the time you come to use it, you can't give it to the dentist because it's now no longer a liquid, it's a solid, which isn't gonna work. So you always wanna make sure that you're getting that out right before the dentist actually needs it. Once this bonding material is set, you will then pass the dentist the composite. Now you can use two different types of composite. They are actually exactly the same. One of them comes in a little capsule and then popped into a gun, then that is squeezed into the patient's mouth. The other one comes in kind of like a tube, almost like a syringe 
syringe. You basically squeeze it up. The composite will come out. It's solid. It's not rock hard. It is moldable. You just take off what you need and pass that to the dentist. The dentist will then place that onto the tooth, shape it, and then set it again with the curing light for about 30 seconds. Once this is all in place, the dentist will then do a final smooth and just make sure it's all shaped correctly. Ask the patient to check that there's no rough edges at all, polish it off, and you're good to go. Now, because this filling is set with a curing light, it's ready to eat on straight away. The only reason why the dentist might advise that you don't have anything too hot is because if you've had an injection, then you're not gonna be able to feel how hot food or drinks are and you can end up burning your mouth without knowing it. Food is fine to eat on straight away onto this filling because it's already set and it's not going to go any harder than what it already is. So that was the second type of white filling, a composite. Moving on now to the third type of filling which you can have. Now the last type of filling you can have is an amalgam filling which is known as a metal filling. Now I know that a lot of people don't like the idea of this because there is mercury in the metal fillings but there is such a tiny tiny amount of mercury in the fillings it's not going to do any harm. So what an amalgam filling like I said a metal filling is is that you don't need to take any steps to be able to use amalgam. It's literally just a case of drilling out the rot for lack of a better word and placing a metal filling in there. Now what you need to do to place the metal filling is that the nurse will take the little capsule place it into the amalgamator which will mix it all up. This is done for about 10 seconds depending on your amalgamator. Some might take more some might take a little bit less. You then pop the little mixed filling into a small pot and the dentist might choose to take this just with tweezers if it's a big filling and place the whole thing in there or you can use something called an amalgam carrier which is where you scoop out the amalgam and you pass that to the dentist and then he or she will squirt that into the tooth. This doesn't need anything to set, it sets pretty quickly so you just want to make sure your patient doesn't bite too hard down on it because obviously at that stage it is still a little bit mouldable so you don't want to have any tooth marks in the filling. Once this is done Again, the dentist will check the bite, make sure there's no rough edges and the patient feels that it's fine and then they can be on their way. This doesn't need any type of light to set it, it just sets on its own. And that's pretty much it for amalgam fillings. They don't really require any work from the nurse, it's just the dentist that has to do all the hard work as with every single treatment that they do. In fact, that's it for all the fillings. I don't know how well I've explained those. I'm sure you guys will let me know if this video was rubbish and no good, if it helped anybody at all. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I don't know if you did. Don't know if it was one of my best videos, but it was a request from a subscriber, so I thought I would do it for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button down below, and then click the little bell next to it so you get notified when I next upload, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Yeah.